We have many more people who want to pay tribute to Senator Bingaman, but he asked us not to line up a series of speeches about him, but to create a thoughtful policy event for a discussion of some of the pressing issues of the day, typical Jeff Bingaman. The New Mexico First Forum Committee worked hard to balance Jeff's desires with our need to brag on him, at least for a little bit. The committee members included Vince Murphy, Connie Weimer, Clara Apodaca, Jean Baca, and Jennifer Salisbury. They chose education, the economy, energy, and the Washington gridlock as our focus areas for the evening. So let us begin. And joining me for these discussions are two U.S. Senators, Jeff Bingaman and Pete Domenici, if they'd come forward now. As Heather Ballas mentioned, Jeff and Pete co-founded New Mexico First, okay, I'll go with and they passed on Jeff. what they had as an original torch to the new yeah. members of yeah. the Senate. Yeah. We're going to have a policy discussion tonight, and at first I have to confess to you, I thought, well, people go to sleep. I mean, not that you're not interested in okay. important issues, but you've had a couple of glasses and, you know, food, a little of this. And then I realized, not with these two. Nobody goes to sleep when Jeff and Pete are wow. talking issues. Don't Senator, bet on take that. Take a seat, please, sir. Don't bet on that. <laughs> Pete, take a seat. Take a seat, sir. What do you want to I sit here. You sit I'm going to sit at the far room. Jeff, if you sit in the middle, and Pete, if you'd sit right there. Sit over here on the right. Good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the right. <laughs> it's appropriate, right? Now, let's start with education. Many of you know that State Senator Cynthia Nava planned to be here tonight to join this discussion. But she broke her collarbone, and she's recovering from an operation. It's a success successful one. She wanted, however, for me to remind us that as a longstanding member of the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, thank you for that in my, in my age, <laughs> Senator Bingaman was an early champion for closing the achievement gap. He fought to improve the Hispanic dropout rate. He supported technology in the classroom and a focus on turnaround schools that are overwhelmingly responsible for the nation's dropout. He's a longtime champion of STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. I could go on and on, but we can better use the time, perhaps, to discuss the things that you and Senator Domenici have done. So let's begin on education. Gentlemen, uh, most surveys say the United States is number one in the world on higher education, universities, such as our great universities in this state. But when it comes to lower grades, they took, a, for instance, one of the leading companies that measures these things, took, a, a, for example, a 15-year-old student and found that we were 17th in reading, 25th in science and math, and on it goes so that we could do anything with our power and ability in this nation we want to. So why haven't we? Why are we number 17? Well, I'll, I'll give my perspective on it. I, I, I don't, I'm not one who believes that the quality of education in our public schools has deteriorated. I think we've, we probably provide a better education today in public schools, as a general matter, than we did 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. But uh, as we have maintained our standard, uh, the rest of the world has moved ahead of us. And uh, a lot of countries have now put such an emphasis on education that uh, we're in the unfortunate circumstance that young people growing up in this country don't have the quality education that uh, kids in some other countries do. do. So I, I think uh, we need to redouble our efforts. I think the, uh, the effort that is being made around the country by states, not by the federal government, but by states to adopt and, and implement common core standards, I think that's a, a major uh, sea change in education. It can be, and uh, if we're successful in implementing those standards, I think it'll dramatically improve the quality of education in our, in our country. Senator Domenici, everything costs money. We're well, cutting federal funds for education. Well, look, Smart. I, first of all, I want, want to tell you that I disagree with my good friend right off. Uh, I, I, answer I, any question you want, Senator. You, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm used to that. I'll answer your question about money in a minute. But uh, look, the truth of the matter is, um, this great country is doomed. 
if we continue to have 25% of those in a graduating class that cannot read or write or conduct themselves in an intelligent manner. You just cannot survive as a kind of democracy we have for another decade with 25% every year in that. And perhaps Senator Bingaman thinks that was as bad or worse 20 years ago. Uh, frankly, if it was, then education was not as relevant as it is today, because clearly this is true, what I just said. I had the opportunity just six days ago by a coincidence to have the immediate past president of uh, uh, the big, biggest uh, uh, defense contractor, your good friend and mine. Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin. Norm, Norm Augustine. Right. Up in my office, uh, I work for a little wonderful, uh, a small but wonderful uh, think tank. Jeff knows about it. It's terrific. And I invited him up, and the whole time was spent talking about what I just said. And he chimed in saying, we won't make it if we don't find a way to educate more of those who have become uneducable and get back into those who are on the streets uneducated and put some resources in to figure out how to get them educated. Now, um, if you want to know what I've been thinking about on education, and then I'll talk about money. I have scribbled twice and thrown away a proposal that I was going to make just on my own to the head of the Republican Party. And I was going to tell them to do one thing, uh, to have a new platform. Utter simplicity. A, a growth tax law, which everybody knows what that means. You've got to reform the tax code so the economy grows, one. Two, we must educate our people without question in a manner that I've just described. And uh, the reason for it, and, and you don't have to have any more of a platform. All you have to do is have a growth economy with a modern tax code and put all the resources you can, Republicans, Democrats, it doesn't matter, okay. put it into education so we can solve the problem I just described. Senator, I know you feel passionate about this. Senator Bingaman, let's come back. You have championed the public school education. You have fought to improve public schools, and I know in many places that's been successful. But why, how, how do you explain then that so many people now who have the means are moving toward the charter schools? They want that. They want to have their kids go to the private schools. And what does that do then to a public school system where people don't have the means to, to improve it? Well, I, I, I do think to improve our schools, we're going to have to do some difficult things. I think we're going to have to recognize that smaller schools are better as a general matter. Uh, in, when you're talking about elementary and secondary schools, I think it's a mistake to have uh, 3,000 person, 3,000 student high schools, as we've got quite a few of them in New Mexico. Uh, I think we need uh, more hours of educational instruction in our schools. Uh, I think we need more days of education uh, in, in, the, in the school year. Uh, those are tough issues. Nobody likes them. They cost, re they cost money. Uh, federal government has never put much money into education, uh, uh, elementary and secondary education in particular. Uh, it's always been a state responsibility uh, and a local responsibility, but in New Mexico, primarily a state responsibility. Uh, I think the federal government should do more. I, I, I congratulate Pete on his suggestion that the federal government should put its resources into into education. Everything uh, else second. Yeah, I think that's great. Unfortunately, you look at the federal budget today and it's something like 2% of the federal budget goes to education. That's the tradition in this country. It's never been the federal government's responsibility uh, to, to provide resources for elementary and secondary education. That, that needs to change. So I agree with that part of what Pete said. All right, let's go on. And, and we have a number of topics this evening. So let me just wind up on education by asking about the No Child Left Behind law, which you supported and voted for originally. And today has come under great criticism in many areas. Basically, is it working? Is it not working? What do you think? Well, I think it isn't working uh, as it should, uh, and there are all kinds of problems with it, and we need to revise it. And we've tried in the Senate to pass uh, uh, amendments to it and changes to it. Uh, unfortunately, we, we get hung up on this whole ideological issue about how, how ro significant a role should the federal government have in education? That's, that's the core disagreement 
that keeps us from going ahead and doing something. President Bush, to his credit, uh, thought that the federal government should take a more aggressive role in trying to improve the quality of education, and he was the one who, who advocated for, uh, for the Congress to do the No Child Left Behind bill. There are lots of problems in the way we did it. Uh, it has way too much testing in it, uh, for example, and, and some of the, some of the uh, goals of it are just unachievable as, as they were written. But uh, the idea that the federal government should, should take a strong role in helping states and local school districts improve education is one that I strongly agree with. Pete? Well, I'm pretty lucky. Uh, I have a son named David, uh, my, my third born, and he uh, went to your law school, Jeff, but uh, he practiced for only a year and a half, and then he uh, was enamored with educating kids, especially those who were poor. So he is uh, the... Uh, young man who started as a, as a principal without any education, a co-principal of five charter schools in Washington, D.C. David Domenici started them and completed them and moved on to another problem. We can talk about it later. So I uh, saw all the pluses because I saw his charter schools, and they worked. And the parents weren't going to wait around until the district fixed its schools while they got their kids educated, so they welcomed the charter school and said, you other leaders, fix the public schools or we're going to continue the charter schools. And some problems are catching up with charter schools, but let me tell you, they've been a godsend for thousands upon thousands of families during this interval and that we don't know what we're doing. And I want to add a point. Uh, we don't like to make things partisan, and I'm, not, I'm trying not to, but I tell you, we got too much organized labor in the public schools, not necessarily here, but in America, and they do not fit, and their organizations do not fit in the public school decorum, demeanor, and what goes on. And we got stalemates beyond belief because of it. And somebody ought to do something about it. The governor from New Jersey did, and he's, uh, he, he won, and he's uh, going to get elected if he wants to. Uh, Senator Bill, right of reply if you care to. Well, I, uh, this is another one of the arguments that we have in, in Washington. I don't doubt that they're. Uh, some, some changes that could be made in that direction. But I think the larger issue is, is the federal government going to step up and really provide leadership on improving education? We've never been able to do that. We've never been able to commit the resources at the federal level. Uh, as long as we're committing 2% of the federal budget to education, we can, we can have all the ideological arguments we want about uh, uh, different things. We're not going to see substantial improvement.